Hi everyone, my name is Marita Harinen, and this is my second presentation for Media Enhanced Learning on Kahoot. So a little bit about me, I'm working towards becoming an instructor in academic upgrading at Selkirk College, which is near Nelson, BC. Academic upgrading, for those of you that don't know, is basically uh, high school level courses that are offered at the college for um, students over the age of 16 to come and complete prerequisites that they might want for post-secondary or even just to finish their high school diploma. My background is also in engineering. I studied biological engineering at the University of Guelph, and I've been involved with health and wellness for the last 10 to 15 years. So before I get started, I'd really like to acknowledge the land that I live on here. Um, I'd like to express my gratitude for the forests, rivers, and lakes that surround me. I'd like to thank the First Nations for protecting this land and continuing to defend these areas that I love so much. Okay, here we go. Kahoot. Kahoot for teaching and learning. It's a game-based learning platform for quizzes and other interactive learning experiences. By the end of this presentation, I'd really like for you to understand what the research shows about how well students can be excited, educated, engaged, and evaluated. Basically, I want you to be able to determine whether or not you think Kahoot is good for teaching and for learning. So part one of four, let's talk about how Kahoot can be used to excite students. Now I give Kahoot a grading of B for its excite factor. I think Kahoot makes learning fun and creates exciting playtime for students. Louisa Rosencheck in an August, 2023 article on Education Week's blog also says it makes learning more social and engaging. She says it strikes the right balance between independence and community. Everyone gets to answer by themselves, but they are part of a larger group having a shared experience. You can create quizzes in the format of popular game shows like Jeopardy or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, says Democratize Ed on the Advocate blog in October of 2023. And what's really nice is students can compete individually or in teams for a less competitive feel, which helps foster teamwork. You can set a timer, which creates a sense of urgency as well. You can design quizzes that take students on virtual field trips to different places around the world. It's a fantastic way to make learning geography or history interactive. You can create quizzes that present controversial topics and let students debate their opinions through the game. And this can encourage respectful discourse. Storytelling cahoots. Design quizzes that tell a story with each question revealing a new part of the narrative. This engages students' curiosity. Create Kahoot quizzes where students need to arrange words or phrases in the correct order. This can help improve problem solving skills. Use emoji polls instead of multiple choice questions. And this can help gather students' opinions on various topics and definitely adds a sense of fun. Now, the reason I gave Kahoot a B rating is because there are some downsides to it. Students who struggle with reading or don't understand what the question is asking or really do get stressed in competitive environments are definitely not encouraged by this process. And those who are left behind are hit with a barrage of red X's, literally in the game, and it, they will have a very demotivating and unsustainable way of learning. 
Kahoot is also overused, which is not a fault of the program, but rather when a program catches on and is popular, teachers and administrators are quick to incorporate it all the time. And this devalues the pleasant break from tradition instruction that Kahoot is meant to be. Okay, part two of four. Let's talk about how Kahoot can be used to educate students. And I give Kahoot a grading of B also for its ability to educate students. And I'll tell you why. So let's look, in, look at an example of a Kahoot quiz. This is a public quiz that was made by the Khan Academy on growth mindset. And remember, teachers can find, use, or repurpose public quizzes like this, saving them time and energy. So if I was to press play solo, this screen would pop up. And then I can add my nickname and compete against people that I don't know and press OK, go. And here's the first question. Do you know how to learn from your mistakes? This is what the answers options look like. So in here, I've got two answers uh, or yeah, that I can choose from. And this 16 is a timer actually. So this is the countdown. Uh, what is really cool is that you can put slides in between the questions that teach you about the material. So in this, quiz, they have inserted this three minute video about Jeff Land, Jeff's learning journey. And then you can also incorporate questions after those videos or slides that you put in to gather feedback on how students understand it. A score, scoreboard can be placed throughout the game to show you how you're doing compared to others. You can divide your students into teams and have them compete against each other in group matches. And again, this can be really helpful if you have some students that maybe are not very competitive or just um, get demotivated and nervous about competing on their own. It also encourages teamwork when you have people working in teams and peer learning and democratize ed um, says this on an article um, on the Advocate blog. Kahoot is great in that you can use it across virtually any subject, whether it be literature, science, or math. It's also great for students who may not really tend to participate in class or engage with material. It's also great because a uh, principle of universal design for learning is the accessibility principle and multiple representation of information is part of that. And as I mentioned, you can incorporate video. You can also incorporate audio and images in a Kahoot quiz, which will really help you reach different learning styles. And this is talked about in an article on the online tools for teaching and learning blog. There's also a read aloud mode, says Jill Stack on the We Are Teachers blog in February of 2023. Uh, so this can encourage people with vi visual challenges. People can hear the questions and possibly answer read aloud, oh sorry, and possible answers read aloud before they choose their answer. So in summary, I believe, in summary of these two points, I believe that Kahoot can, Kahoot can be used to educate, and it's also great for accessibility of learning. Um, I give them both Bs, but I think where Kahoot really shines is in its ability to engage and evaluate students. So let's move on to part three, how well students are engaged. And I give Kahoot an A for this. Students and teachers love it, and it definitely gets students participating and involved in the learning process. You can make your lessons and presentations more interactive, says Kahoot, um, sorry, says Stenard in teacher training videos. And one's competitive spirit can really take over. Again, it's super popular and provides great, greater interaction among classmates in virtual learning 
environment. You can also have your students get involved in the process of creating a Kahoot game, and this can help them review information, share it with their classmates. You can also incorporate questions that don't award points um, to gather opinion data. And Melissa Powers talks about this on the Common Sense Education website in 2021. Uh, you can find out how things are going and how students are enjoying your classes. Uh, please note that this is a paid feature as uh, a lot of the features in Kahoot are, and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Okay, part four, evaluation. I think Kahoot does an amazing job of offering evaluation techniques or assessment techniques. So you can uh, record participation or encourage students just to attend class live, says Matthias Abibi in 2021 on a Stanford University education blog. So if it's a challenge to get students coming to class, this might be really helpful. He also says that educators leverage Kahoot to assess understanding at the end of a class period on the material which has just been taught. So a little bit more common to use this. Um, another neat thing is that you can actually get detailed information about which questions were missed most often. And along with score info pointing those, pinpointing those who got less than 35% correct. You can determine which ways, which topics, sorry, need more review and who needs a little more help. You can use Kahoot quizzes to prompt students to reflect on their learning journey or to provide feedback on the course. Teachers can do polls and surveys about um, their teaching methods. Find out how the students feel about your teaching evaluation methods. You can also use classroom assessment techniques to do this. And just before I end, I said I would talk about the pricing a little bit. And just very briefly, I did mention there's a free version and you can use it with up to 10 students. Um, it is very basic, the free version. So don't expect too much with that. Um, even with the $12 per month option, you can have up to 25 students in and a lot more options and then you can see here, or sorry, um, for $22.50 a month, you can have up to 50 students, and for $37.50 per month, up to 100 students. Some of the premium features include open-ended questions rather than just multiple choice, or um, you can do more like puzzles and just incorporate a lot more um, customized backgrounds and things like that. So thank you very much for watching. If you are watching this from home, um, I don't have anyone in my presentation today. So um, I do have some questions that I would ask and maybe you just wanna think about if you're watching this from home though on your own. Uh, first of all, here are my references. So I would want you to think about um, whether or not you have an opinion on Kahoot. If you've used it before, uh, what do you think about it? And I'm really curious to know too, if uh, you think it's overused at all, or if students are at all bored by it or not as excited about Kahoot. And are there other platforms that you know of that might provide some newness or freshness to a game-based learning? All right, thank you very much. Have a great rest of your night.